I used to be the head teacher and the assistant director at Brooklyn Free Space Preschool. From March until June, all the classrooms were on the distance learning. Uh, and it was not so easy because we have two to four year old children in our school and we had to figure out within a week how to still attract uh, the attention of our children through the technology that usually we try to stay away from. Uh, that was one of the things that the parents were struggling with in the beginning, um, that the kids wouldn't let them work. So we have come up with an idea of, of a sign that the children could put on, hang on the door where their parent was working. We would videotape maybe two or three minute uh, long pre-recorded greeting for the children to let them know what we were planning to do for the day and maybe give them, let's say, a challenge of building as tall a tower from anything that they can find in the, in the house. You know. And then we would have 20 minute live session with the whole group. We divided them in thirds and each teacher had there, there are four children, then next week we would rotate. We also had individual time with one-on-one -on -one with the teachers. It was kind of challenging to create a calendar that would be moving around like this. You had to have kind of a 3D thinking about that. This is the shortened name of each child and the days of the week and the weeks and these are the initials of each teacher. It was easier for me to, to do it by hand than, than computer. I think we lost about five families, five students. So we have to fundraise more now. Because I'm in the health risk group, uh, my doctor recommended that I stop working with the very young children. And now I'm home 24 hours with my husband who is in retirement. I started cooking Japanese cuisine and I have time now to do a lot of knitting. I want to replace uh, some finger puppets that uh, I brought from Prague for my school. They got lost over time. And so everything bad is good for something. Uh, I get to go outside a lot and now even the sun came out. Um, so it's going well actually. Good evening, or good morning, uh, we are in cyberspace time, so I guess it doesn't matter. I am the author of The Defectors. This work is, I would describe it as a increasingly uh, experimental work. I would describe the characters in the books as uh, quantum beings uh, here and, and not here. Um, and uh, I think of the book as a machine. Uh, my father was a machinist. He worked at uh, Cheka de Blansko and he started his own machine shop in America in the 1970s. That experience of growing up in a machine shop in America surrounded by Czech immigrants, Slovak immigrants, as well as Polacks and Austrians, and very much defined my interests and my trajectory as a writer. Uh, even the word uh, defector is very interesting to me. The idea of its political connotation, of course, but also uh, to be defective or to, to be a defect, like uh, in machine parts, you speak of like a defect. So, uh, let me read a little bit the defectors. My driver's license belongs to a man named Zig. His mugshot looks like me with a slight hangover. We share the same birthday, August 21st, 1968. The same address, beneath the L on 
31st Street in Astoria, Queens. The same organ donor information, kidney, liver, eyeballs. But he does not feel like me. And why should I lie? Why should I say I am fine? Everything is great. Everything is super. Everything is fantastic. When everything is so-so. The doctor says there is no cure for my condition. I am, after all, a political case. Nevertheless, he tries to inject me with his manic optimism. But I want stronger stuff. I want freedom. I want the truth. I am a writer. That's a problem right there. Try to write something. Millions of eyeballs are watching television right now, unblinking. I no longer read literature. I spent Thousands of hours staring into books, and still, I am lost. The only place I exist is here. Everything else was devoured by reality. number of months since the virus and other issues that happened, I am consciously avoiding any kind of relationship in my work with those issues, political or artistic. My work is always based on ancient civilization documentation, Stations of a Cross, Roman weddings, uh, Pompeii. Recently I have been working with 16th century up to 17, 1800s, based on Royals, Goya's paintings. The work is created from natural resins coming from tropical trees, closely related to amber, which has been around for millions of years. Uh, I heated the resins to very high temperature, blend them together with oil pigments, freeze them, break them on a different kind of segments, and then I reconfigure them on a panels, reheat it again, and they fuse together, creating the needed uh, markings. Royals, which are continuations of this whole group, are loosely related to the Habsburgs monarchy, which dominated the European uh, environment for almost uh, three to four hundred years, and uh, they are working with uh, relatively abstract uh, shape of the royal crown and again they are executed in amber to manifest the opulence and the splendor of the courts. Lately I start to use cardboard as the caring media for the amber to create a large series metropolitan empire collections of the Habsburgs, royal crowns and vessels. There are two French guys back in 1900s, Eddie Villard and Pierre Bonnard. They also did some of their works on cardboard, and both of them end up uh, in Guggenheim, so I think I may have a chance. <laughs> 